Hey everybody, John here, and uh, out on my bee yards, we're gonna take some honey supers today. <clears throat> the locusts have been blo in bloom, and locust honey is great. It's very delicious, so we wanna uh, grab all the locust frames that I can and bottle that separately from everything else. And so, you know, sometimes I call it wildflower honey, spring honey, but if I know it's all locust, I'm gonna bottle it and uh, call that locust honey because it's some good stuff, and I don't want to mix it with the rest of the, the rest of everything. We also have to do some uh, yard maintenance here on the bees. Uh, I'll give you a picture here real quick. So here's the bee yard. I don't know how many supers we have that are full, but you can tell I've got a couple hives that are really tilted to the front, and I don't want to risk uh, all that honey coming out and landing on the uh, on the ground and get ruined. So. Uh, they are clearly bearding up. It is, uh, what's today? June the 3rd, I believe. It's Friday, June the 3rd. And um, about 81 degrees out right now. It's about 1.30. I took half the day off of work. Uh, you can tell the, a lot of girls in the front porch here in, in the two big boxes. These are the ones that I did splits on recently in my, one of my last videos. So we're going to pull some supers off. Uh, you know, I might not pull all of them. Leave the girls some honey. But if I can find some locusts, honey and know for sure that it's locust honey, I'm taking it with me today. Uh, I'll show you how the process is set up. So basically, we're gonna put on a fume board up top, drive the bees down, whatever boxes we find, uh, whatever supers we find that we wanna, wanna get them out of there. So put the fume boards up top, spray some uh, Bee Quick, I think is what it's called. I'll show you the bottle here before too long on the fume board. Give them a few moments to work their way down. I'll grab the super after they, the bees are mostly exited take it over here to my portable table and I'm going to tilt it up vertically. Okay. tilt it up vertically. I'm going to use that blower to help blow all the bees out, get them out of here. Then I will take them over to my truck. Now here's one tip for everybody. If you have a bee truck, like I do, uh, mine's a Ford uh, 2012, about 300,000 miles on it. So it's done, done good. But my bed liner has got these grooves in it. If I just set that super, that honey super on the bed liner, those bees are gonna to continue to come in underneath these, in these grooves and get to the honey. So what I do is I've got an old, pla uh, old sheet of plywood. I will set once the super right there, as soon as the bees have been blown out of it for the most part, and put another one on top so the bees can't get in from underneath or on top. So that's what I do in the back of my truck. If you're a small hobby beekeeper like I am, it's a great tip for you. Those uh, supers that we have in here all have drawn comb. And I will be replacing the supers that I pull from, from those girls with these supers here with the drawn comb. So that's the process. I uh, won't be able to film everything when I get moving. Um, you know, I want to get moving. It's, it's Like I said, it's 81, 82 degrees out here. The bees are not going to be very happy. They're going to be flying around, all the way around uh, once we start pulling the honey. And so I'm going to try to work pretty quick. Um, I'll set it up so you can see the overall process a couple times. But um, just so you know... There's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be um, probably left out of this video. But I just want to show you the first part of what goes into the process when I do honey extraction. Okay, this black painted lid, and it's painted black just to get it hotter quicker, uh, especially out here in the sunlight. It's a beautiful, beautiful, clear day. Very bright, very sunny. But it's a homemade box with felt inside, and this is what is commonly referred to as a fume board. I have another one that I'll be using. This is, just, this is just some old felt. I've got another one that's got an old t-shirt in here. And um, what I'll do is I'll spray this stuff called Fisher's Bee Quick. There are other varieties out there, but I'll spray four or five squirts of Bee Quick on here. To me, it smells fairly good. The uh, girls do not like it. And they will run down and try to escape out of that super as fast as they can. I already have some bees, I think, smelling it through this plastic. Not happy with me. You can see them all flying around possibly, but I'm gonna make sure my veil's attached. Um, I normally will not use, uh, I don't always use gloves. I will, I will be using gloves when I'm doing the extraction simply because the girls are gonna get mad. And secondly, I don't like get honey on my fingers if I can prevent it. So um, I'll start the process here. I'm gonna take this lid off first, see how full that super is. If that super is not very full, I'll take it off and set it to the side and I'll use the Be Quick on the second honey super there that you see at the top. I hear him. It's a 
busy group of girls is for sure. I'll just set this down here by the lower supers. Check the lid, always check the lid for the queen. It's a rarity, but on occasion you will see it. So the girls are very active, that's for sure. Again, I'm working from the back here. So the girls, I'm not trying to bother the girls up front. Just gonna lean up against the lid. Check the back of that one for the queen. I don't see the queen up here. All right, so we've got some bee bread. We certainly have some locust honey, I believe. Um, so this box, we're gonna go ahead and drive them out and I'll show you how, how this works. I and mean, this box looks pretty full. I and mean, this frame's very drawn out. This one's not 100% drawn out. What I'm gonna look for is capped honey. If the cap, if it's capped about 80% or so um, coverage, then I, I think I'm good. I'm gonna put it in a uh, with a dehydrator on it to help reduce some of the moisture content. If I pull some that's not completely drawn, that's okay. I'll take it back to the house and I'll just put it in a nuke or something like that for those girls to eat or just put it in, in, in another... Uh, another tub of honey there or another super uh, for the girls at my house to, to, to use. So what we'll do, take the fume board, Fisher's Bee Quick. Again, I kind of like the smell. I don't think the smell's bad at all, uh, but the bees don't like it. I put in 10 squirts. We'll see how that goes. I'll flip the fume board over right on top. And I'm going to let it set there for a few minutes. I can already hear the bees buzzing. They don't like it. I mean, they are making tons of noise. So I'll let it here, sit here for a few minutes. Some of the bees will go down to the next lower super. Some, what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll crack this a bit and the bees will start flying out the crack. And you'll, you'll see what I mean here in a second. Uh, what I'm going to do now on this other hive, take this lid off, see what it looks like. Let those girls get used to that smell. I don't have as many girls up top here. Check the lid. But they are coming out. They're running out. They know somebody's messing with their with their hive. Now they're all the way up top there. Check the inner cover. The queen don't see her there either. Okay, this is not as drawn out as the other one, but we're gonna drive them down anyway. So I'm gonna get the other fume board. This fume board is just an old t-shirt. I don't think you see it from that angle, but just an old t-shirt. Stapled to the inside. I'll give it 10 squirts. Put this fume board on those girls. Let it get to work. I can hear those immediately. All right, we're gonna take this one, give it a little crack, and you see what what the bees are doing. They are running out. I'm getting my gloves. I had one girl chase me all the way over to the truck. She was trying to get me. They do not like the smell. Let's take a peek inside. You can see them, they are all, they're all unhappy. What I want them to do is I really want to drive them down. But I don't care if they fly out. If they flee out, it's fine. 
Oh, by the way, I think in my last video I mentioned that uh, I typically, when I'm in my out apiaries, and this is not in my home, my home base, so this is one of my out yards. Uh, when I'm in one of my out apiaries, I typically will have the smoker going. When I'm extracting honey, that's an exception. Um, people can argue with me all they want to, but I have found that the smoke, the, the, the smoke scent, and the, the smell of the, the bee quick, the fisher's bee quick, uh, it confuses the bees. So I, I typically do not want to mix the two. Uh, the effectiveness of the bee quick is no longer as effective once we start using smoke. So I will try to refrain from smoke unless the girls just get overly aggressive and I really have no choice. Uh, but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, this will be a pretty smooth process and we're gonna get moving. They're still there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this top super off. An awful lot of them are gone, that's for sure. And taller than what I really like to see. I'm the all the beekeepers have their own names. You got the fat bee man, you got the skinny bee man, I guess I'm the short, fat, and ugly bee man. Okay, there's some darker stuff there. There are some, there is some honeycomb there, some, some locust honey. There's also bee bread. I don't really want to pull that out right now. So I'm going to take this super off, set it off to the side. If I was a commercial beekeeper, I would not have this luxury, right? Uh, but you can see this one's not, you can see it's not fully drawn. That's very wet. Lots of bee bread. Uh, this one's fully uh, loaded with honey, which is great, but if I was a commercial beekeeper, I wouldn't have this luxury. Since I'm a small beekeeper, I do. I'm pulling this super off, setting the sides with the one below it looks like. Commercial beekeeper, just take them all, sort them out later. Always check the bottom side, set them vertically so your frames don't move. Check the bottom side for swarm cells, just in case there are any. I see lots of drone comb on one of those frames. So they weren't just using it for honey. So now, that being said, I need to keep an eye out for the queen. I could choose to pull these frames individually. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take a look at one more, one more lower. See what we got on this this hive. This one's not full, full at all. Again, set them vertically. Look down below for swarm cells. Check for brood frame. There's a lot of honey, but here you got a lot of drone brood being built as well. So I'm gonna let these girls continue doing their job with honey production. Um, I'm definitely not gonna go any lower than I am right now. Put this one back on. I wanna look at a couple of these uh, frames here and see the queens there. We got some abnormal drone comb, I guess I would call it abnormal. Might not be abnormal at all. One's full. 
B bread, nice heavy one. Mix it out the side. Check both sides of the queens. Shouldn't be on there, but you never know, right? Because it looks like there might be some brood on this one. So I definitely want to be aware of the queen's presence if I see her. She's gone all the way up into the fifth super and you got brood, capped brood on that side, capped brood on this side. And I don't want the brood up in uh, this box. So I'm gonna put this one in a nuke box. Not necessarily to do a split, but to assist resources I have back in some of my weaker hives. So, um, again, take a good look for that queen. Make sure she's not on here because I don't want to hurt this colony. But I also don't want brood frames in my uh, honey soup. It's got brood, huge, huge drone on there. Nice looking drone. But why are they up so high? You girls, you had room. What are you doing? Lots of bee bread, we got cat brood, drone sweat cells. You might see the queen on that side. Cat brood again. Nice brood pattern, but she acts like she was out of room. She wasn't out of room. There's a the start of a uh, swarm cell. Let's we'll see if they finish it. More cat brood. More cat brood, both sides. More cat brood, but I don't see any don't see any eggs out to the side, so hopefully she has moved down and is doing her job down below, which is where I want her to be. Got the drone comb right there. Looking carefully, cautiously for the queen. I don't see her on your side. I'm putting these in the box. Without seeing any eggs, they're not gonna be able to make their own queen. So those are just gonna be resources I'm gonna use uh, in another hive to build those hives up stronger. Now, could be before I'm done here, I find some eggs. And they have the ability to make some, make a queen. This is just full of honey. I'm going to leave that one in here. I'm going to put a few frames of drawn comb for the girls to start making some more honey. Some of these frames aren't the greatest, but they will build it out. I use a nine frame spacer on the honey supers. The girls will make uh, pull those frames out so they're nice and fat. I think get more bang for your buck going with nine frames and a ten frame setup for honey uh, than you do with just ten, with using ten frames. I think you actually get more honey and less work. So I'm gonna be up here in a couple weeks. I'm gonna put these girls back to bed. Let them draw all that out. It is a very strong colony. 
as you can see from the cat brood. Now let's take a look at this one now. See how they're done. Most of them are gone. Uh, not all. You got some big fat drones up top. Still remaining. Not all of it's drawn, but man, there's some nice look of honey there. I'm gonna pull this super off, take it to the table, blow the bees out, and uh, set it on the back of my truck. That nice white comb, it's beautiful white comb. Look at that. That's beautiful stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at that big fat drone right there. I'm gonna go, I don't see any brood between these frames. There's one that's not drawn out at all, but the rest of them are nice and fat. I hope you can see that in the camera. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple more shots of Be Quick. Drive these girls down. Kind of sunny. This one, I'm gonna dismantle at least four or five supers because you can tell how this baby's leaning. I've got to prop it up. It broke the pallet. They're up at the top. Check the lid to the queen. I always check the lid for spiders too. We got these black spiders up here. So always kill any egg sacs that I see. Any cobwebs. Yeah, they're building honey on top of that inner cover. Building comb. Always check the top for the queen as well. Both sides of the inner cover. side that baby is full on both sides so I'm gonna give the other fume board some spray yeah. more still up here than I would have liked still a nice box of honey Like most of them are out of this one too, but I'm still gonna put the fuel board back up while I blow those beats out. See what we got. Uh, a lot of that's capped honey. Got a couple frames that aren't drawn out yet. And again, I got 10 in here, which I shouldn't have. But here we go. We got brood in that box, so I gotta be aware that the queen could be up there. What I'd like to do is move these girls over to a new location. Possibly do a walkway split so I can get them light enough that I can put uh, some boards underneath that one. I'm not even gonna take it down. I'm not even gonna look for the queen population here is pretty big. It's a very nice population of bees. I may be hurting by doing this, but we'll see what's in the bottom box. I can get down this bottom one, put a board in underneath it. Mm. I hope. If I can find a board, it's not rotten. Oh, 
feisty. They're flying around, not happy. Nurse bees are gonna come up to take care of that open, drone, uh, open comb, make some queen cells. I'm even gonna take one of those brood frames back out this morning. We'll have some more nurse bees very, very soon. We're gonna let this hopelessly queenless hive do their thing. Now this is the box that I just moved. If you can see these girls, look how calm they are. Okay, now the ones that can fly, the ones that have been forager bees, will eventually fly back to this box that is now hopelessly queenless. I've propped them up a little bit so they're not as leaning forward as they were. If I can find some more boards, I'll uh, make it even better here before I leave. But all those bees will help build out those OTS splits that I just made on the spot. If you've never heard of that one, I would highly recommend it. But between the eggs that I couldn't see and those, uh, those things that I made for the o OTS, they should be able to create a new queen and they'll still continue honey production. These girls, I think have the queen. I think the queen's in there. So they're gonna be fine. Uh, what the downside is a lot of this population is going to fly out of here and go back to the other one So that they may be suffering from a population uh, Decrease for a little bit But I'm gonna grab another brood frame from the ones I took out earlier shake those bees off put them in here So at least they're gonna have some uh, new bees here very very soon um, And that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna continue working the bee yard Well, I got six full of honey supers, but as you can tell, man, these bees are not happy with me. I've been stung three or four times, uh, once on my ear through the veil. Uh, but you know, I did a lot of damage to them. Not only did we pull honey, but it's really when I made that split is really when they, they got excited. Um, so some of these, some of these girls have been chasing me around nonstop, which basically means I'm going to be, uh, driving with my veil on at least for a while because they're going to get in the car with me there's nothing i can do about it but i do have another uh trick i wanted to show you i'm gonna try to walk away from the bees and see if i can't you know get like 30 yards away 40 yards away and see if they'll go back home i don't know if they will or not some of these girls are pretty upset and of course they, they smell the pheromone of where they stung me uh, on the ear so they keep p pinging my veil because the rest of them are trying to do the same but I am thirsty and uh, I'm not going to take the veil off because the girls are still flying. So here's a trick. If you haven't done this one before, right through the veil, not bad. Almost like the real thing. It's not bad. <laughs> 